Someone break Suckle's cover, man. Get him out Violence, <laughs> violence. <laughs> uh, Bob, um, what, what's, what's your um, thoughts on Speaker's Corner in general? My thoughts on Speaker's Corner in general are that um, Speaker's Corner uh, has always been a remarkable place since it became what it is. And that um, it is something that is becoming increasingly precious within our society, the UK, as the liberal establishment continue to chip away at freedom of speech. The Speaker's Corner is governed by all the same laws, but it's just policed differently to give it the culture that it's got. And I think that Speaker's Corner, particularly because of all the cameras, gives Christians a fantastic opportunity to reach out to people right across the world. And I find it embarrassing that the church hasn't grasped that opportunity with both hands. So to just give you an example, Soko Films has been going for a year. We've had nearly four and a half million views. And at the last count, 13,000 of those views were inside Saudi Arabia. Which means that I've spoken to more, possibly, possibly, potentially, I've spoken to more um, Arab Muslims inside Saudi Arabia than any other missionary inside the country has done. So it is an, a, a fantastic opportunity that we should defend fiercely and we should expand the concept of freedom of speech from here to the rest of the country, rather than seeing this as some bubble of exoticness within British society. What do you think about the current state of Speaker's Corner? The current state of Speaker's Corner, I think, um, I think it's a shame that people are, are, are using violence at the corner, that there's become a bit of a mob mentality where people are being driven out. That the whole point of Speaker's Corner is that people come here to speak and other people come here to listen. And in that process, you might get offended and hear something you do not like. And if you don't like it, the best way to do it is to either ridicule it, as Steve does, or, or to defeat it with a better idea. Not use a kind of mob mentality to drive people out. Um, you know, and, and I think that I think that the police here are a bit of a quandary as to what to do. There shouldn't be a, a veto of the mob, but in recent weeks there has been, and that should be stopped. What do you think is the cause of the um, problems? The cause of the problems? Yes. Poor policing. It's the fact that the police give in to the crowd, the mob, and that encourages a mob to form. If you let a mob win, then they think they can win again. So what it is is poor policing. The police, once again, as always, in so many situations, including this one, looking for the path of least resistance to, uh, to get their thing done, rather than doing their job well. Um, and that's the reason for the cause of the problems. And what's your reason for coming to Speaker's Corner? Um, I, I'm coming to Speaker's Corner because it's part of a discernment for me. Um, I'm doing a discernment as a Christian in, in terms of what I feel that my vocation might be. And I initially wanted to get involved with Jay Smith, so when I contacted him, um, I realised that he was leaving. So I, I contacted him the week before he left. He told, I said, oh, I've come to help you. I'd like to get involved in what you're doing. And he said, oh, uh, I'm leaving next week. So in terms of, in terms of uh, getting involved, it was part of a discernment for me to uh, discern really whether this is something that God wants me to do here in London or whether I have a vocation to do something else. Because as part of Christian spirituality, as part of the spirituality of our faith, we seek to find God's vocation in our lives. And part of the process of discernment is that you have to walk the path that you feel you might be called to, to see if it suits you, if it fits you. So coming to Speaker's Corner is very much part of that. I don't know if I'm going to be here forever or whether it's just for a period of time, which is why when Mansour asked me, he said I was a tourist because I didn't know really how else to describe it. What's been your um, experiences coming here? Experiences of coming here? Um, well, on the whole, I have found it stimulating. Um, I have found it energizing. I found that it has given me an opportunity to be challenged in my faith, uh, as well as to challenge other people in theirs. Um, I think the only real benefit to all the cameras and all of this is that it allows us to uh, speak to an audience 
in the privacy of their own room that perhaps in this public setting that same audience might not be willing to go yeah I agree with you because there's too much emotionally at stake um, so on the whole my experiences have been positive I've had some negative experiences particularly with certain Islamists at the corner people who seem to think that they have the right to dominate the corner according to their values so I've had a, a couple of you know, I've had people get really aggressive, shout directly in my ear, shout right in my face. I've been pushed a couple of times, I've been poked, um, I've been insulted. Um, and it tends to be consistently from the same group of people, which is sad. Um, but, you know, I, you, you take the rough and the tumble. And what's your aspiration for the future in Speaker's Corner? In Speaker's Corner is to continue to uphold the name of Christ and to demonstrate that Christ is man's only saviour and that the Christian way of life is the best alternative to the failures of liberalism, to the failures of communism, to the failures of ethno-nationalism, of nationalism, of Islam and of all the various other things that oppose the gospel. Because I truly believe that the Christian faith impacts the individual for the better, the community for the better and society for the better. Uh, and it is our only ark, Christ is our only ark, by which when we sit before the judgment seat of God, we can hope to possibly escape. So my aspirations is to continue to work with JC, to build Soko Films um, as an alternative to all the Dawa channels that are um, pressing their own belief system uh, as, a Christian, as a Christian alternative to that. Anything else you want to say in relation to Speaker's Corner? Say again, sorry? Anything else you want to say in relation to Speaker's Corner? I would say this. I would say that um, Speaker's Corner is the free... I, I would say that free speech that is exemplified at Speaker's Corner shouldn't be treated as a novelty. It is something that we need across the UK. Because right now, Speaker's Corner is becoming a bubble of free speech in a world of curated speech and that is not a healthy society. What we need in a liberal democracy, if it's to work by its own rubrics, is free speech for everyone. So in some ways, in some ways, um, Speaker's Corner shouldn't become a tourist attraction because you should be able to talk like this anywhere in the country. Um, it'll still be a, a place for quacks, you know, like myself, but um, it's, it's entertaining and I, I would encourage people maybe to have more appreciation for the benefits of freedom of speech. Thank you very much, Leon. God bless you, bro. Look after yourself. Subscribe to Content Over Everything and support the Bentley Fund. Content Over Everything, the second best channel at Speaker's Corner. Of course you can. You, you describe Saudi Arabia, I've seen you. Can you also see the negative side of all the cameras that we now get as we can talk? Absolutely. I mean, nothing nothing like cameras is going to be just wholly positive or wholly negative. It's going to be a mixed bag. And then you have to balance what are the positives versus what are the negatives. Yeah. And I think that the fact that the police now have had to up their game in terms of policing the violence of speakers. Because everyone doesn't realise that there was violence before the cameras, it's just that the police were able to ignore it. Whereas now, if it's caught on camera, there's pressure on the police to act, you know? Um, so I think there's positives for that. The negatives, of course, is that um, it allows people to have this fuel, this personal rivalry start to form. Um, but those personal rivalries were there before the cameras, and taking them away will not take away the problem. It will just mean that the police get away with not policing. I don't think it, taking away cameras would reduce that problem. Um, I No, no. The problem would still be there. So the fact that it leads to them being whipped up during the week and throughout the week, you don't think that adds in any significant way no, it to does. the problem? It does, but, but the, way to, the way to police society is not to give in to thuggish behaviour, but to oppose it. So if people, I mean, people can get whipped up as much as they want through the films. It's not a justification for coming back next week and acting like a dickhead. The, the reality, and the reality is if someone is coming and being violent at the corner or intimidating, the laws are sufficient that police should police, not cower to them. If you start taking away cameras, then that means that the police won't have that pressure to act when it's caught on film because there won't be the evidence. 
And, and the reality is that Jay Smith did Speaker's Corner for 20 odd years. And he was punched, spat upon, kicked and stabbed all before there were cameras. Yes, he was stabbed. And all before there were cameras. Yeah? Now, the, the, the reality is that, the, yes, the, the cameras create this frenzy, and that's a bad thing, but people should be self-controlled. You know, the Christian faith teaches self-control. Muslims claim that Islam teaches self-control. Um, not that we see much fruit of it here, but the, the, the fact of the matter is that if someone can't control themselves, that is when the police are supposed to step in and control the person. Not take away the cameras because suddenly they're feeling the pressure of, look at all these problems. I wonder whether they are going to take away the cameras. If they do that, I'm not sure how practically they will be able to do that, but if they do, will that stop people coming? Um, no, we'll just get a good phone. <laughs> Hidden cameras. Yeah, hidden because cameras. they can't they can't take away the cameras really. And and I think it's cowardice on part of the police that that they are even contemplating that fact because that is again shutting down a freedom of speech. It's freedom of expression. And they're take rather than but let's face it, they're not the first to do that. Look no, at YouTube, not. look at Twitter, absolutely. look what they've been yeah. doing. No, absolutely. We've got this culture developing in our society where we are walking into other people taking away our free speech. If the police take away the cameras, what they're doing is they're taking away free expression. What they should be doing is policing people who can't control themselves. And, and, and the police taking away cameras is dealing with the cobwebs rather than the spider. Yeah, yeah, yeah? good point. So my advice to the police is, is do your jobs. Like, if someone is being a dickhead, exclude them from the park. Don't take away so, the cameras just because it shows how much you're not policing. So what is your view on why do they not do that? Because because I, I think I think that it is a case that the, 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 the way that the police are trained is they are trained to keep the peace. That's their imperative. Mm -hmm. So they find the path of least resistance to keep the peace. Which means that if a mob forms and wants to drive someone out of speaker's corner, it is easier for them to acquiesce to the demands of the mob yep. than it is to defend free speech yep. and take the mob on. And as you pointed out, where does that end up? Where does it, does it ends end up, up with the mob ruling? ruling. Exactly. And, and the human rights, human rights law, um, that EU institution, says that there should be, in terms of the, the limit on freedom of speech, there should be no veto of the mob. Yep. So if the police police on the basis of the veto of the mob, they're not policing human rights law because human rights law says there is no uh, veto of the mob. So what should happen is an American style situation where the police go, look, if you, wanna, if you think this guy's a dickhead and he thinks you're a dickhead, scream at one another all you want. But if you get too aggressive, you stand on that side of the street, and you stand on that side of the street and just shout at one another. And that's how they should police it. Just, you know, that's how it should be treated. If you don't like what you're hearing and you can't control yourself, walk away, stand somewhere else, speak against them. But what they're doing at the moment is taking people out of the park and it sounds like contemplating the removal of cameras. And all that will do is mean that the police get off the hook. That's what will happen. And would you agree with me that there are a lot of people putting forward a narrative that it's the right that have caused the violence and the problems here, and it's the likes of Tommy Robinson, it's the likes of people who come here and speak out against Islam that are causing the problem, whereas the reality of the chronology of the problems completely predates the likes of Tommy Robinson coming here for half an hour Absolutely. once. It completely predates that. Sarah got his Osman warning, or 18 months before ago, Tommy 24 Robinson. months ago, way before any one of the FLA, and, DFLA and exactly, veterans. Exactly, exactly. All of these... Yet all, they're forgetting that reality. Because they, that, they're selectively forgetting that reality. I mean, we have, a, we have a news article that's appeared in a magazine that so-called films get cited in, in which um, it describes uh, Speaker's Corner as being taken over by the extreme right. And we're going to do a response to that because it's a complete assassination. Not of so called films, incidentally, but of the real situation. That's the male. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. the website yeah. is. We, we, yeah, that one. But, but the point is the point is, Christopher, the Kurdish convert from yeah. Islam to Christianity, yeah. was attacked before Tommy Robinson. Again, yeah. Punched off his ladder. Pushed, punched off his ladder. Um, 
um, um, Jay Smith was attacked before Tommy Robinson. Sarah Garvey was attacked before Tommy Robinson. There are by the Muslims. There are plenty of examples of people. There are plenty of examples of of people being attacked before Tommy Robinson. That is where the aggression has come from. And to blame that on the far right is to simply ignore all the history of what has happened in the last few years here before Tommy Robinson ever came to this place. And the liberal are just using this place to create their own narrative, to villainise the And his, right. his presence, his attendance at Speaker's Corner was directly in response to that history mm. of violence going on yep. there, and one group trying to physically intimidate and bully their dominance there. Absolutely, and, and, and whilst we're speaking about that, like Tommy Robinson coming here has had every right to come here, you know, it, and, and uh, but I, I will call out the fact that the, his supporters, not necessarily Tommy Robinson, but his supporters, I saw them myself. Full some, of, some, some, some. I some. think you probably should be Yeah, saying. you're right, my apologies. Oh Let me correct, days. let me correct. And the no, you're quite right, you're quite right. You're quite right to correct me. Some of his supporters, I saw them myself, pulled someone off a ladder. And that is not the spirit. If you came here to defend free speech, that means you're here to defend speech that you don't like as well. Which means if someone wants to get up on a ladder and criticize you, and criticise Tommy Robinson, you should let him. You can boo him, you can heckle him, but, but I don't will, pull him but off I will, and you're completely right, and that violence should not have happened. But I will point out that if someone got up in that individual's meeting and put the ladder in close proximity, he would have not have been very, would not have been very happy with that situation. It he was. It, 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 it does. It, right. it doesn't excuse or make it right. Yeah. But he was being directly provocative by trying to get up on a ladder within within someone else's large meeting, and we know from experience he gets very irate if someone does that to him, or if someone's just shouting on the ground. That means he can get as irate as he wanted. No one should have put a hand on him. No, they should have booed are, are him, they should have heckled him, they should have ignored him, they should have laughed at him. There's a million ways they could have responded, but pulling him off the ladder was not the way no, to go. I agree. I agree. But Tommy Robinson coming here and giving a speech is, is, is part of the culture of what it is. Karl Marx gave speeches yes. at Speaker's Corner. Lots of controversial figures have given speeches at Speaker's Corner. So that it's part of the culture, and 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 to and the fact that you know there was even the thought that Muslims could stop Tommy Robinson coming here, you know. Well, they they literally and physically formed a battle line. I mean, it, yeah. was, it was self-evident. They called themselves into a militaristic line, but, and but, some of them have sub subsequently been excluded for their behaviour on that. Be I think. I think. Can I just just say? I think that what needs to happen, if the police really want to stop things getting worse in Speaker's Corner, they need to ramp up the exclusion orders for people that have a history of, of being a nuisance, being aggressive, anyone who uses aggression, like uh, physical aggression, because obviously, you know, I shout a lot, you know, um, and uh, that, that... Well, can I give you an example? To be Today, a well-known Muslim, Modine, physically threw a drink of lemonade or something in someone else's face. Yeah. That was immediately reported to the police. And you know what the police's response was? Not interested. If, if he does it again, we'll give, we'll give him a warning. Or we'll give him an exclusion And that's order. the kind so of... So even throwing your face in a female... Throwing your drink in a female's face was not felt sufficient for the police Did to deal with that individual there but, and But there. Do, do you agree with me, Steve, that the danger is if people start to feel threatened and they can't see appropriate yeah. defence coming from the police, yeah. they will start to organise themselves Absolutely. to fill the vacuum. Absolutely. And that is the danger of what is happening with this um, soft kind of policing of aggression, is that ultimately, you look to, if you look to the police and the police go, well, you know, I don't want to get involved in that, then what you, I mean, because it's not free expression to chuck your drink, that's assault. It but should have been treated assault. I was certainly saying earlier is that today, you know, you were saying that you were complaining that in your experience of the uh, Speaker's Corner that people have shouted in your face, yeah. said abusive words, yeah. and uh, possibly pushed or assaulted you in some minor way, yeah. or maybe major yeah, yeah. way. I, to be honest, Bob, I've seen you do that today. Right, but what you didn't hear... You know, I saw. Yeah, what you didn't hear, what you didn't hear in that little synopsis you just gave is I said to Leon, you take the rough with the tumble. Because yeah. I don't mind people heckling me. I don't mind people insulting me. And I've said this publicly, it's on, it'll be coming out through SoCo films. 
I don't mind people heckling me. Yeah. Steve, God bless him, when I first came, but this guy used to heckle me. But I'm, like talking, to I'm not talking yeah. about heckling. There was a guy who wanted to put uh, the, his bag in front of uh, uh, Mr. Safari Film's yep. camera, yep. and you moved his arm away. Because, well, I mean, I did that instinctively. So no, no, I'll have to, I have to apologise to that guy. So that's all right. And, and it's also, a, he, he, although Mr. JC has a right to film, I also have a right to do that. And, and you could, we can change that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not going to repeat a mistake. I'm not going to repeat. I owe, I owe the guy an apology. Yeah. What I'm saying is that we're all, we're all hypocrites. Right, but hold on, hold on a second. Hold on one second. No, you can't, no, you, can't, on you cannot compare the this, level of violence and intimidation. I know, no, but the, and thuggery between there, there is, that's there really is a, hold on there is a stark difference between me chucking my drink in your face and someone putting his hand in front of someone else's camera and then someone moving the hand down technically legally they, they both count as assault but, 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 hold on one second here's the other difference is now you've pointed out because i really did that and genuinely did not clock it myself that i'd done that but now you've pointed it out to me if i meet that other guy and i will apologize to him Something tells me Mo Dean won't be coming back to apologise to the guy who <laughs> took the drink. But the it's, it's an escalation of conflict, and actually that's what that guy was saying, the guy with the beard, was around religions and Islam and Christianity needing each other. There's a reciprocal kind of uh, relationships that happen both between ourselves and other people and within our minds that is around conflict. And what I would say is that the main issue is that actually we have to be non-conflicting in ourselves and try not to be hypocritical. You know, you talked about people in particular, some people in this corner, not being able to control themselves. And actually this is an example of actually how control is lost in, in, in the individual, even in yourself. If I, if I, if I can reply, again, you, you're trying to form a moral equivalence between someone moving a hand down out and chucking a drink in the face. Now, I'll be genuine. I, like, I, I honestly did not clock that I did that. I just did that automatically and I didn't even register it in my own mind. And I'm so quite happy to apologise. It's like throwing right. a drink in their face is a yeah, bit emotional it, reaction. It, it, but, but, but hold on, this is, this is the danger of the kind of liberal soppiness <laughs> culture that we've got in this country is they try to create moral equivalents where moral equivalents don't exist right technically under the law yeah they're both assault but clearly to any common sense man there's a difference between those two events and I'm willing to apologize Modine will not be apologizing so the, 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 the thing is the danger with this kind of narrative that we get from the liberal Dugans is that they Thank want you. to create oh, yeah, yeah, they, 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 I'm allowed to heckle you bro, it's speaker's corner. Right. Yeah, okay. like You're the, speaking, yeah. that's technically not heckling, no, right? Yeah. You're so, the speaker. Yeah, exactly. So so the point that's is just abuse. the point is, the point is, the point is well, I'm glad you recognise that being a liberal progressive is an abusive term. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I'm the, gonna the, the point I'm is, gonna it's especially yeah, abusive when you don't actually know my belief system. The point is the point is, this kind of liberal do-gooder narrative is, 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 is dangerous because what it essentially says is don't stand up for yourself. That's what it says. It says don't stand up for yourself, don't stand up for your boundaries, your borders, your frontiers. What it says is let, and, and ultimately the way that that will work out in practice is that the bully wins. If we all follow this guy's logic, the bully wins. That is but not, is, actually, that is if not we all follow your that logic. That is not liberalism. You, you and I share the same concerns, I believe, on, yeah. on the subject of Islam, absolutely together with you on that concern. You, you continually blame it on the liberalism of, of our society, of society etc, etc. Yeah. I wholly disagree with that. I view myself as a left of centre liberal and it's because of that that I stand against Islam, mm. or certainly many interpretations of Islam, which I view as far-right, fascistic, intolerant. It's because of my political position that I stand so fully against that, that yeah. you continually almost blame the whole problem on the liberal society. Yeah, I, I think you come across to me more as a classical liberal as opposed to a liberal progressive. <laughs> And, and the thing is that, that you came across more like a classical liberalism. And the thing, the reason why classical liberals have more in common with Christians is because classical liberalism is a much closer historical movement to it grew out of Christianity and is closer to Christianity. Which means classical liberals often find themselves agreeing with Christians, and Christians often find so themselves maybe you agreeing with be more precise than your definition. Well, use well of I, the do, word I do, liberal. I do, I do. But 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 liberalism as it is understood today. Because let's be honest, most people don't know the distinction. Well, isn't, I mean, to me, right or wrongly, a substantial bit of lib liberalism is tolerance. 
However, we, sh we must not, and I'm sure you agree with this, we must not be and should not be tolerant of the intolerant. And surely that's part of liberalism. I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut the cake that way, but I get what you're saying. But you're, you're, you're accusing me of lib, uh, liberalism, liber, liberal, whatever it is. But actually, I was. So liberal do good. Yeah, I, as a liberal do <laughs> good. Right. But I was accusing you of being a hypocrite. That's absolutely. That has fine. nothing to do with me being liberal or not. Yeah, you can call me a hypocrite. I mean, a Hippocrates is someone who wears a mask and pretends to be one thing publicly and another thing in private. That's a hypocrite. I think is is it's, it's they do something or they 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 say something, but they do something that, different to what they yeah, say. Maybe he was he was, he was criticising that? something that he hasn't reached perfection that, in that, himself. It, exactly. What's that? What's Much that? like an alcoholic who <laughs> who recognises that he needs to get off alcohol, but can't that yet bring himself yeah. to do it. You know, you know, I mean, it's, one, it's not a hip. One second, it's not a hypocrite not to be perfect. If, even if you're striving to perfection. And Christianity is a religion in which we have this perfect ideal. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, all Christians understand that that is an unachievable goal, but the striving towards it and failing is not the same as hypocrisy. Okay, another... hypocrisy, hypocrisy is someone pretending to be something in public, like, say, being a Dawa missionary, and then sending... Um, dick pics. Dick pics. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good example? Yeah. Um, like that, that, that would be an example. Not of naming names. I, well, and, and just for the benefit, or just for the benefit of honesty, otherwise I will then be. You haven't done it, have you, both? No, no, no. Holy! <laughs> 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 just, just for the benefit. Just if for the benefit. anyone out there who's got bombs, just for the benefit. Just, just so that I'm not a hypocrite, I have to confess publicly that <laughs> oh. I have struggled with sexuality in my own life, and 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 still do. You know, as a red-blooded man, so I cannot, I cannot stand in judgment but the fact that i am willing to confess that publicly means i'm not a hypocrite can i give an example of where you can put across that message that you put across earlier about control aggressive shouting etc without being a hypocrite and you say you know it would be nice if we could work a bit better because we all struggle with that but actually you you put it in the other camp the the problem it's the older plank in the eye isn't it so it's, it's, it's putting it under camp rather than understanding that humanly we do struggle with control, aggression and uh, communication. Can I, can I, can I, just wanna, I just want to state that I think me and this brother are working to two different narratives. Because Christ said, I have come not to bring peace to the world, but to bring, to, to, to bring war, to set fire yawn, to the earth, to lay an axe to the root. He's, he's, he talks about that those that's that choose final, others are above him and not worthy of him. <laughs> that he's, he's come to take father against son and son against father and daughter against mother. The point, the point of the Christian faith is that it does divide, and I am not interested in any kind of multicultural get along. But with I, you're broadening the argument that I'm yeah. saying. I'm but saying what, what, what that you can, you no, can hold be. On, hold on, you quoted my scripture, right? You misquoted my scripture okay. because Christ is home. teaching his disciples that you take out the plank from your own eye before trying to take out the speck from your brother. Yeah. This is how Christians conduct themselves within the community. That is what we do to one another. What that doesn't mean is that we have to follow some soppy kind of spirituality where we can't call out injustice for what it is or stand up for our own community, our own people or our own belief system. That's, uh, I think that's blurring the lines. I think within this uh, issue that you, you spoke earlier is that you were talking about another group um, whilst doing the same things that you're talking about. Wait, 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 wait in what, one second. What, in one, in, in what, oh, I am calling out the fact that for 1400 years no no that wasn't what you were saying so so be more specific you, was, not you clear said what you said i have had bad experiences in speaker's corner yes people have been shouting right in my face and in my ear uh, they've pushed me and uh, and threatened me and they've they've abu they've said abusive things about me and what i said in response to that okay. is that actually i've seen you do five out of six of those items Okay, so, so let me reply to that, because as is demonstrated here, I am more than capable of having a calm conversation. If you look at so-called films and you watch the videos, you will see a consistent pattern. I start off having a calm conversation, <laughs> then usually someone from the Dawa team comes along, starts screaming and shouting, starts ranting and raving, starts getting really aggressive, and I simply stand up for myself. That's war. There is, I have no problem with war. 
I know. I am not a pacifist. Course, not I know. I know. I know. You have yeah. no problem but, but with killing. Are you a pacifist <laughs> out of interest? <laughs> know, are, are you a pacifist? No, no, the killing war now. is killing. Hey, right? yeah. <laughs> You've got no problem with killing in in, in uh, that you when you can justify it. Oh, is that no? No, is that correct? Uh, if it's justified, yes. Yes, if it's justified, except Do you that, not? that you can also say uh, when you discuss uh, with a, a woman about. Uh, or somebody about abortion, that there is absolutely no justification to kill. That's correct. And and there's a bit of a conflict in those. So, 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 I mean, let, let, let me let me just let me just ask you a question. Now. Are you a pacifist? I don't think that uh, I could be fully de defined as a pacifist. So to call me out for but not it being, mean I justify. Uh, so 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 for 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 Point if you are ever, not a pacifist. Ever, huh? If you're not a pacifist, there's a, there's a continuum. If there's you're continuum. not, a, if you're not you're a pacifist, far up the one end from the yeah. of like I mean, it, it, it strikes me that the the, the, the the I I'm not basically I'm just not interested in your get along hippie commune narrative. Like I don't I don't care. Mm. I do not care if the Christian faith offends you or the pra being a disciple know. of Christ offends you. If following Christ means that we all get along, brilliant. I'm all for that. Blessed are the peacemakers. And the peacemakers. No, the peacemakers. <laughs> but but if if all if being a disciple of Christ means conflict, then fine, I'm good for that too. Like I I just want to follow Christ, and I hope that it means peace, and I would work for peace, but I'm not frightened if it doesn't. What I am frightened of is that on Judgment Day I will come before my Lord, and my Lord will say to me, "You unfaithful servant." That is what I'm afraid of. I want to be able to stand before my Lord and my Lord say to me, you good and faithful servant. And the faith is uh, to love uh, God and to love uh, your, your neighbour as you do yourself. Are you a Christian? That's the faith. Right, because you, you speak with these, the, you, you, you keep trying to characterise my Christian faith as if it should fit into your kind of political narrative. Not really, I'm, I'm utilising a common uh, Christian exactly. kind of say. And that's the problem with common, mate, is it's all too common. <laughs> you know? Common, common is like... It's also a quote from the Bible. Yeah, uh, opinions are like belly buttons. But it's Everyone's got one, but they don't have much water. Your synthesis, your synthesis of it is going and to be different from the next no, Well, actually, no, because you, you, there is a historical no. way that the Christian faith has understood itself. And if you're, if you're as rooted and approximating yourself, as close to that historical faith as possible, then it is not about your personal opinion. I hope in my whole life that I express nothing new in terms of Christian doctrine. I only want to re-express all that is Christian doctrine. I hope that in all my Christian life, I never express a new morality that I only re-express the old Christian morality. The problem with um, the, the kind of narrative that you seem to be following is you want Christianity to fit in your box to work for your political agenda. And I do not care about your political agenda. I want to destroy your political agenda. Because I want my faith. But you're, 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 you're saying that I'm putting words in your mouth. You're, you're, I now have a political agenda. Because you're trying to, you're trying, you're trying to define for me what my faith should be. And that can only be because it suits you. I said, I said a quote-ish, a rough quote from the Bible. I wasn't defined by mine. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's fine. But then again, it's hard to see with a light. Yeah, no, don't worry. I've struggled on many of them. So, so in answer to the in answer to the question, Christians are called to love, to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, to love our neighbours as ourselves. That's what I said. To love our brothers and sisters in Christ, to love our enemies, to love our mother and father. It's an ethic of love. But as you know, a man of your experienced years, there are sometimes, there are sometimes, there are sometimes points at which two loves can conflict with one another. That, that you can't love two opposing things, and so you have to arrange that love in a value system. And so that value system, according to the faith, is God first, your brothers and sisters second, your neighbour third, your enemies fourth, well, sorry, your family 
well, your family fit, can fit anywhere within the spectrum. Um, yeah, they can be in your enemy as well. Yeah, exactly. So that's why they, they, can move, they can move up and down. They can move up and down. And then your enemies last. So if I can bless the Dawa team, as I have done, I've bought them books, I've given them books, I've tried to show them love. I will do so. But if ever the love of the Dawa team opposes loving my brothers and sisters, then I will choose to love my brothers and sisters and oppose the Dawa team. So love is not kind of some soppy, gushy kind of, oh, let's all get a holong and a hippie It can sometimes be hard and sometimes be soft, well, depending that's, on the circumstances. That's within your worldview. Uh, that's the Christian well, worldview. Well, I would say that would be within your worldview. It's the Christian worldview. Uh, if you're going to dispute that... You can broaden the whole of so, Christian... So bring your, bring your evidence. If you want to dispute that, where's well, your evidence? Well, okay, my dispute of that statement is very broad to say that that's the whole Christian worldview. Is, is, uh, what, but what is your evidence I'm wrong? Well, I haven't got all the evidence because that's like proving Do you have any evidence? I would say that I would have uh, met a Christian who had an opposing view. So does that mean that that's not all Christians? Then? No, no. It would say that it would say that opinions are like belly buttons. They don't count for much water. Okay, so if I met said, if, but anyway, the point we're that talking I was about to... history. This has been put I, into no, no, practice. You were talking about a, a hierarchy of yes. love. Yes, absolutely. You find me a Christian that says that. Your, your love of God should be secondary to anything else. Well, that wasn't the hierarchy that was being questioned. Really. No, that's exactly the hierarchy. I said the, the love of God was first. The family. I said the love of God yeah, was yeah, first. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now find me a Christian who would dispute that. No, but that. I, I, I was disputing the, uh, the other hierarchy. All right, so I'm, I'm right, I, I am historically right about the first one. Then. I think it's clear that that would be... Uh, but whether... I, I would also imagine there will be some Christians who... Who actually I do know who say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in God. So that I'm mean, anyway. This Christians. is just this is, exactly. Yeah, they're, not but they, they're self. They're self can, can, can but, any, but who but, cares what they but, describe no, okay, themselves as? But this is by the by because uh, there are know, there are men who describe themselves as women. Because the other issue that I wanted to make, which is, I think is a bit more important point, is about what is actually defined as love. And I think that um, a lot of the way that you talk about the uh, Dawa team uh, is in a sense judgment and I think that actually when we understand our judgment that that is when we actually understand compassion and love. So let, let's just deal with that because there is again this kind of soppy do-gooder attitude that, that says oh no. I wonder, if, I wonder if, if there's a way that you could describe it without that first bit that you the start soppy, the soppy you know, do-gooder. Oh, okay the do-gooder. There is a do-gooder <laughs> attitude. Does that meet your criterion? So there is a do Actually, no. I make Steve laugh. That's great. Oh, you often make yeah. me laugh. That's great. I'm sure I do. Um, so, so my point to you is, my point to you is, right, that, that like the, the problem with that, I, I don't do, mind if you call me soppy. Uh, sorry, that's so good. So the soppy do good. The problem with the soppy do good attitude is that is is that it, it doesn't understand the difference between judgment and discernment. Okay. So in, in the Christian faith, there is a difference. We are called not to judge because it is not our responsibility to judge. God will be your judge. God will be Steve's judge. God will be my judge. Okay? But I can still discern. If you are an asshole, I can discern that. Yeah? And there is nothing wrong with identifying an asshole for what he is. So if a thug is coming here behaving like a thug, I can call them a thug. And I can discern that they are a thug by them being a thug. And there is no judgment in me discerning that I think there is. or calling it out. So what you're trying to say is we can never, we can never make... Are you saying that we can't I, I make any I'm moral playing, judgments? I think I'm play, saying play the ball, not the man. Are you saying that we can't I, make I moral judgments? Play, play the ball, not the man. Yeah, yeah. So, so, if, so you're saying that I call them out for being a thug. Yeah. Actually, they have, they're a human being with some thuggish behaviour. So, so are you saying that we shouldn't oppose the thuggish behaviour? I'm saying that we shouldn't uh, label people in, in broad, universal that terms. Did you, did you not that at the beginning... Yeah, position. sorry, let's be clear. At the beginning, did you not label me a hypocrite? I said that you that what you were saying was hypocritical. Ah, right. Okay. That's a, a, a cunning kind of get out. Cunning get out. I mean, I, 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 am, I, am, I honestly cannot remember whether he called me a hypocrite or just said I was no, being hypocritical. 
Did he? Okay. I, did I? Did I? Or did I, I say right. isn't so, that? So aren't you being? No, I think well, you actually said everyone the can you rewind are the tape and find out. For but well, I did also but say. I did also say that I also am a hypocrite, as is everyone. Okay. So, so my my point to you is that in terms of in terms of dealing with this kind of thuggish mentality, yeah, right. This, your, your kind of soppy attitude will not solve anything. You will just be bullied, and by the, your position that you're taking up, you are going to drag everyone down with you. So because you want to be a wimp, and you want everyone else to be a wimp, you're saying that we all need to get bullied because you don't like the confrontation that comes about by standing up against the bully. No, actually, I, I would disagree with that, and I'd say it's not about standing up uh, to things that are attacking you, but actually it's it's a kind of instigating a level of uh, antipathy towards groups of people by, uh, you know, giving broad terms to those people. So, so, that's, so when you're here, it's the same as um, self-defense, isn't it? So if when you're if somebody's attacking you in legal terms, you can defend yourself against them. Do you agree? Uh, but with you that? but you can't go chasing them and then kind of hitting them afterwards. The people that you're talking about, they're not even here. So you're not defending yourself. You're not being uh, pressed by them. You're just talking about them. You have a narrative about them. Except that they are also broadcasting a narrative about us. I know. And that's, so in that's terms war, of isn't it? That's in war. terms of war. I, 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 again, I have no problem with war. Um, in terms of, in terms of, but they're not here now. But they I have, have a question about they're, they're not here right now. But obviously, when Bob's speaking, they are around him and doing Many whatever, times. whatever they do. But they're not here right now but to accost him or my, whatever. And my argument, which Bob can I, uh, can, can I just, can is I that we're all doing the same sort of thing. Can I just finish my point? My point is that right now there will have been Dawa channels broadcasting a narrative about Christians and about the Christian faith. Okay. Now, please know that I am at least more courteous to Muslims because I, I argue against the Dawah team. I make a distinction between Muslims as a whole and, and these Dawahists who are coming here and libeling Christians as confused about the Trinity and not knowing their faith and, you know, I am more courteous than they them. Would, they would say that you libel them. And I would also say libel. that um, that you... You're not addressing what I've said. I, I would also say that you accuse people of being in, in the Dawa team, whether you know them or not. Well, I would suggest that if I recognise a face as someone who comes a lot, then... then you, they're in that team? Yes. Yes, they, they broadcast themselves having meals together. We know they work together. We know they're teamed up in cameras. I think that is by every rational definition a team. They are an organised group. Well, I, I, you know, I don't know about... I think, I think what's happening here I is think Bob has a very strong position of how he wants to correlate his... Bob has a very strong position on how he correlates his Christian thesis towards Muslims or whatever. And you're coming across as a bit more gentle, telling Bob that he shouldn't speak the way he does. The fact he's passionate and embraces his guard and wants to speak the way he does, you can't actually stop him from doing that. But then maybe he's not correlating properly with your more liberal. So I think you both somehow need to correlate together. But maybe think, now I'm being woolly. And yeah, I think I, I think my danger, the, the danger that I see in, in your position, is that you carve a space for Salafist thuggism. That's what you do. You are a soft apologist. You're uh, one second. You're by the position that you take. Please no, I'm critiquing your position. By the position that you take, you make yourself a useful idiot to Salafists. That's what you've become. You know, and and, and I don't Say want to you follow think. your folly because you're a dang that th your attitudes are a day if we embrace your attitudes, we might as well just throw in the towel and all take shahada. Well, I think I think, take your I think when you're in a kind of Christian versus Muslim theological war, then I can understand why you might think I'm letting the side down. Well, you're not on my side. I know. I'm not on your side. I'm not on either side. Only Christians are on my side. I know. And I'm, I'm only on the side, side of the Christians. Yeah. So, so you know, I'm not doing anything that it kind of allows or. or uh, but you do so because so. because no, you because want I would to also say the same to. You, you, but to but you people. want to propose a narrative. That, that makes space for the Salafists. It's kind of a utopian vision of society. Oh, if we could only just get along. <coughs> the reality of human sin, the reality of human sin is that your utopian vision is a daydream. And the quicker you let go of your daydream, the better. 
Well, you know, I, I, I would disagree. I, I would say... But there's no reality of... How would you summarise your position? I would say that, um, that actually when we're in conflict in ourselves, and that's the conflict that we have to resolve first, before we start, before we start, kind of trying to solve the world's problems. Well, I think, I think, if everyone waited to do that before they tackled the world's problems, nothing would get done. And I think that because if everyone was doing it, then there wouldn't be the world's problems. No, you have to wait a long time because yes. nobody yeah. can be perfect, no can, can they? Be perfect. Nobody can be one hundred percent perfect. The, the, the one second. So how are you going to wait to be absolutely one hundred percent perfect in yourself exactly. to then save exactly. everybody else? You know? Exactly. And I would no, say can I, things can I, are one hundred percent perfect. Can I just right? The, the reality is, as Christians, we we do strive for perfection. Be, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. But, but we also know as Christians that if you wait to be perfect, you will do nothing. So as Christians, we are called to work from where we are and to use our gifts and abilities for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Now you have framed that consistently through our discussion with the language of war. All right, and I've just rolled with it. I have just rolled with it. But let no, us be clear. You said I, I'm not against war, you said. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you framed it as Islam v Christianity. You've used the term on um, um, war. I, I have consistently, because there are some times where I, I get ahead of myself and I speak wrongly. But if you look okay, at... You're thinking, yeah, of course I am. By Christ, not by you. But, but like, in terms of... In terms me. Of, in, terms of, in terms of... In terms of what, what my whole experiment here is to... Is this an experiment? It's a discernment. Is to critique the ideology. To make a distinction between Muslims as a general population, Islamists and Taoists. Yeah? But I am not embarrassed to call out Islamists for what they are, or Taoists for what they are, or liberals for what they are, because, because frankly, you know, if we were all like you, not only would, I mean, here you are tackling the world's problems, right? I mean, you're, you're talking to me about my problem. Have you sorted all your problems out? <laughs> I don't really have any problems. Wow. Are you perfect? No, no, no. All right, hold on. Now, didn't your logic be, Sort yourself out before you sort out the problems of the world. So what are you doing here talking to me? Having fun. Yeah. Having fun. You know, can I have a yeah. question? Yes. <laughs> In a video, I think about two or three weeks ago, you said that Christians should take back Constantinople. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, leave Constantinople alone. Constantinople belongs to the Christians. Greeks. Are, are, are those Greeks? Are those Greeks Orthodox? Yeah. So are we talking about Christians? Yes. Right then. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I don't know where to go from here. Okay. Wait, what other cities do you want? Do you want like uh, Damascus? Well, all of North Africa, the Middle East, uh, Turkey, Greater Armenia. You know. Well, what? Just say Middle East. Yeah, most of the Middle East. Oh, Not all of it. All right. So, like, is it going to be no Muslims allowed, or just like, hey, Christians? Dude, are dude, to roll we're, we're talking fantasy. This is not going to happen. All right, yeah, it's yeah. just a little bit. It, 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 it is, it is just to point out the fact. The reason why I said that is to point out the fact that those are Christian lands taken by force. It's never going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I would love it to, if through a, a, a legal political system, you know, like Israel was established. You know, land was carved out of the Middle East and given to the Jewish people. If something could happen like that for the Christians in the Middle East, I'd be all in favour of it. <laughs> and including, that's greater Armenia. Remember, Muslims are occupying northern Cyprus right now. They're occupying southern uh, Kosovo, uh, southern Serbia right now. You know, Christians are being persecuted right now and the liberal establishment doesn't want to do anything about it. You know, Hagia Sophia is a Christian church that is being desecrated right now. Yeah? And, and the world wants to pretend. And the church, because of our useless leaders, is silent about all of these things. And we're told that Aza Bibi would not be given asylum by the British government because they were worried about what would happen in Britain. That is exactly what they've said. Now, what does that tell you about what the liberal establishment? They accuse people. Yeah. What do, they, they, they accuse people of Islamophobia. Is that not a form of Islamophobia? I am afraid of what? <laughs> Violence towards one individual? Riots on the street? What are their security concerns? And who are their security concerns about? You know? So.
Are we all done? You got anything more to say? Do good. No, no, no. You know, I can't help it. Yeah. Shoot anyway, me. It's a pleasure Shoot speaking me. to you. <laughs> you look after yourself. Take care, Godspeed. Bro. Steve, as always, mate. See you on Thursday. Oh, I'll get the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I will try. Is that the secret? The secret Illuminati. Yeah. Yeah. The secret. Yeah. Wink, wink, yeah. wink, wink. Yeah. Nudge, nudge. We're having, we're having, we're having a Freemason meeting. Yeah. Like, He's yeah. going to try and tackle his sexuality. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to let you forget that. Anyway, well done, Bob. God bless. Have a lovely night, guys. I'll see you in maybe a week. Peace.